Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to the beginning of a new series called The New Species, taken from Reddit and written by its director. If at any point during the series you enjoy a chapter, I humbly ask that you head to the original post and give it an upvote, just so the author knows that you did enjoy it. Thank you in advance for doing so. Anyways, on to the story. Chapter 1 Subject, Shiphead Ulina Species, Urukari Description, reptilian humanoid, no tail, 5 foot 3 inches, 1.6 meters, average height, 135 pounds or 61 kilograms, average weight, 105 year life expectancy, ship, RSV Loelana, fights with honor, location, unknown, our ship had taken a beating, and nobody can tell me where we are, our nav officer is down and probably isn't going to survive his wounds, my second has already dead, Head smashed in by a console detached when we were hit by the first missile, so, uh, My own head was reading from the successive slipspace jumps that we had just made. The first jump was to arrive at our destination, and the second was to escape the ambush that had awaited us. The second one was the problem. It had been done out of desperation. We had jumped blind without shields. We have multiple hell breaches. How faster than light drivers offline... And our engines are not responding, sir. The panic in the voice of Lumna, my head of engineering, was palpable. Evacuate and seal the breaches sectors, initiate distress protocols, and try to find out where we are, I managed to say through gritted teeth. This was supposed to be a simple scouting mission. Some warp irregularities that we were supposed to scan and report back on. Our shields didn't even have a chance to spool up before we had been fired upon by the Omni-Union bastards. We had been hit hard and the additional strain of the unshielded warp likely caused even more damage. Sir, the ship that hit us was a destroyer class, my intel officer Crean informed me. There is no way that they were there by chance. That's not good, I replied. We need to inform the Republic as soon as we can. Speaking of which, where are we on the location? Fine, Grimmins. Judging from my flat pie, sir, we're far beyond our borders. That's not good also. Well... We're also outside the OU's border, so it could be worse. Probably. I'll have more info when our sensors come back online. Jumping on shield that desynchronized them. Crying frowned as she glanced at the nav panel across the bridge. My nav officer, Kron, had been taken to the medbay. Kron and Kron were hatchmates, siblings, that burst into the world simultaneously. It's said that they have an unshakable bond, and as far as I've seen, that that holds up. The odds of both of them being assigned to the same ship were slim to none, but they somehow made it happen. Their playful banter made it long tracks into the deep space less exhausting. I hope Kron makes it. His quick thinking had saved us. He had already calculated a blind jump by the time I gave the order. Leibna interrupted my chain of thought. Shiphead, I have a more comprehensive damage report. Let's hear it. We're in a bad way. We have of all breaches in engineering, life support, and living quarters. These areas have been sealed off until we can enact repairs. But that will require a space war. Una grimaced. We've lost a lot of gas, and the pressurized reserves might not be enough to fully repressurize those sectors. Understood. As long as we don't have leaks, you can take your time formulating a plan. Not too long, though, or we'll run out of rations. I smiled at my little joke. Luna didn't. We also have no propulsion or shields, sublight and our FTLD are non-responsive, and vacuum exposed. I wouldn't be surprised if we were leaking radiation, but I can't confirm that without our sensors. Our shields are non-functional and our frame is damaged. We're going to need at least a dry dock for full repairs, but I think it's likely that the ship has turtled. This was far from Lower Lana's maiden voyage. It had been a ship head for 12 years, but the ship had been in service for at least 30 she had started life as a corvette, but it is now classified as a frigate. Relatively small for a warship, but faster than most and could pack a punch. As long as we got a swing in, at least. The lower Lana could fit a crew of up to 50, but operated best with a smaller crew. We had departed with a crew of 38, including myself. What's our casualties look like? I said, no longer smiling. Luna looked down at the data pad suddenly. Six dead, ten in critical injured. Four unaccounted for. Twenty casualties. My hearts sank. More than half my crew out of action, and more than a quarter of them dead or MIA. 
I felt myself spiraling and shook myself out of it. Half is better than all. Keep me updated on the status of the injured and missing. I'll notify the next of kin when we're rescued. Speaking of which, how's the distress signal looking? It's beeping away, shiphead, crying, said. And our sensors have just came back online. We're definitely leaking radiation, Lugna. Anyways, I can pinpoint where we are now. Hopefully there's an exploration team within sensor range. The odds of that were low. Ever since the war with the Omni Union had begun, the Republic had been more focused on manning warships than exploring the cosmos. For good reason, though. The war hadn't been going in our favor. It seemed like for every OU ship we took out, another three took their place. We managed to keep them out of the core system, but we were firmly on the defensive. Nah, I spoke too soon, Crying sighed. We're well out of range of anything Republic. No known life this far out. Looks like we're smacked in the middle of a solar system, though. Maybe we can get some supplies for repairs. Let's see, um, a yellow sun, eight planets. Oh, four of them are gas giants, sir. Uh, no worries about the repressurization. I smiled sadly. That's good. Hopefully we can get what we need and limp back to the Republic. Heck! Crying interrupted me. Shiphead, the solar system is inhabited. What? What? Crying looked at me. I'm showing signs of advanced colonization on two planets and several moons. Actually, one of the planets looks like a capital world. The entire surface is covered in artificial structures, and also they are... The proximity alarm pinged. The first two notes were the same for every ship that approached. The second two determined if it was friend or foe or unknown. In my twelve years of being a shiphead, I'd never heard the last two notes. Unknown. Lovnow rushed back to his console. Unknown vessel on approach, Crying said, baffled. It's absolutely massive, easily twice the size of any battleship I've ever seen. Its shields have powered up, but it doesn't appear to have its weapons armed. Not that we'd necessarily be able to tell, Lovnow said fearfully. My setup straight and asked. Bow the comms online. Yes, sir. Hail them. They're hailing us, sir, Lovnow said. Do you want me to put them through? I nodded, and Lovnow set to work opening the channel. The sounds that came through our speakers were nonsensical and guttural. I looked at Lou now in confusion. The channel is working. We'll need a minute for the translator to take effect, he explained. The next noise I heard nearly sent me into an early grave from shock. No need for that. We've scanned your logs and extrapolated your language. I am Captain Reynolds of the USS Thanatos. You seem to be in a spot of bother. May we assist? Master voice from the speaker. It took me a second to remember how to speak. I am ship lead Ulina of the RSV Lower Lena. We come in peace and are in no position to turn down an offer of aid. It shall be done. Prepare to be boarded and welcome to Seoul. End of chapter. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Andrical, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's sister, Ambrose Cattell, and Quantum Wednesday. Thank you very much.